Hello, my name is Jessamine. I head up the Employment and Intellectual Property Departments in Stevenson Harwood's Hong Kong office. If you're interested in knowing a bit more about me, there is some information about what I do on slide two of my PowerPoint presentation. My talk today, Safeguarding Confidential Information and Trade Secrets, will look at the different types of information and the protection which the law accords to them, what business owners can do to safeguard their information, and we also look at practical steps which can be taken to ensure that trade secrets stay secret and confidential information remains confidential. Lastly, we will have a look at the IP protection available. So let's start. Under common law, which is what is practiced in Hong Kong, information can fall within one of four categories. The first category is information that is largely incidental to an employer's business interests and is readily available from public sources. The second category is information that amounts to general knowledge and skill acquired by an employee in the course of his employment. So it's not available to the general public, but it's information picked up from being on the job. The third category of information is confidential information. And lastly, trade secrets is the fourth category of information. Now, the distinction between these categories is important as depending on which category the information falls in will determine the level of protection afforded to it. Information which is publicly available and general knowledge and skill, i.e. the information from the first two categories, which I mentioned earlier, are not usually capable of protection either during or after employment even through use of express restrictive covenants. However, while public information is clearly not confidential, where an end product results from applying skill and labor to information in the public domain, that end product will be protectable. So an example of this would be a market analysis report or survey results which are compiled from information found in the public domain. So let's have a look at what constitutes confidential information. Case law defines it to be information which, if it falls into the hands of a competitor, would give them an unfair advantage over the business of the owner of the confidential information. Examples of confidential information would include customer lists, price lists, and future business plans. Now, confidential information is protected in different ways under common law. In an employment scenario, which is usually what business owners are most concerned with, the implied duties of a contract of employment would protect an employer and prohibits an employee from misusing confidential information during the course of the employment. Employees under, conf under common law owe various implied duties to their employer, which would include a duty of fidelity and a duty of mutual trust and confidence. These would prohibit the employee from misusing their employer's confidential information. However, once the employment relation terminates, only if the employer is restrained by post-termination restrictive covenants will the employer be able to prevent an employee from misusing or disclosing confidential information of the employer. If there are no post-termination restrictive covenants binding the employee, the employer will not be able to prevent a disclosure or misuse of that confidential information by the ex-employee. So moving on to trade secrets. The, this is business information which would significantly damage the business if disclosed to a competitor and that the information's owner has made efforts to prevent the widespread publication of that information. Now there is no widely accepted definition of trade secrets, but the courts have historically recognized technical or scientific information such as chemical formula or technical designs to be trade secrets. Other examples would be recipes such as the coating for KFC's chicken or the Coca-Cola recipe. Now, in terms of protection, trade secrets are protected under common law during and after employment, whether or not there are any express restrictive co covenants in the employee's employment contract. 
the law of confidence will apply post-termination to assist any business owner where there's been a breach by the ex-employee. So which category a piece of information falls into is sometimes difficult to determine. The courts have taken into account various factors listed on slide eight, including the nature of the employment and the information itself, how the employer treats the confidential information, for example, whether the employer impressed on the employee that the information is confidential, and whether the information can be easily isolated from other information, which an employee is free to disclose. Um, such an example would be having a, a document password protected, or sometimes the information may be kept in a safe. The courts will also consider the impact of the disclosure, meaning how much harm will be done to the business if the information is disclosed. One thing to note is that if an ex-employee acquires confidential information from a business owner illegitimately, such as by stealing it, then any use of that information harming the ex-employer will be a breach of confidence. In this case, for it to be protected, a business owner does not need to show that the information is a trade secret, even though the employment has ceased and there is no restrictive covenant. All they need to, to show is that the information was acquired illegitimately. So moving on, what should a business owner do to protect the confidential information and trade secrets? For most business owners, the biggest threat to the trade secrets and confidential information are their employees. Employees have access to the proprietary information, and if they're upset, they will also have the opportunity to take the information to a competitor. Therefore, a business owner should assess the risks and try and avoid threats to the business information. By having well-drafted employment contracts and handbooks that regulate their employees' behavior, they can ensure that the staff are motivated and properly rewarded to avoid a desire to harm the company. And the business owner can implement effective practices to prevent, detect, and deal with misuse and misappropriation. So the primary weapon of most business owners is the contract of, inf of employment. A common problem that business owners face when trying to enforce the covenants is that the drafting of them does not re reflect the facts. It's therefore imperative that before they draft the employment contracts and the covenants that are there within them to protect the business that a full fact finding exercise is undertaken. Particular attention should be paid to the nature of the business, the employee's role and what confidential information or trade secrets they will have access to, what assets need protecting, is the employee using company provided devices such as laptops and mobile phones or their own devices, and last but not least, how things may change over time. What this means is how might the business expand and develop? Will the employee be promoted? And how this will affect their responsibility and information which they have access to. Now, after the fact-finding exercise, the business owner should go on to consider which contractual clauses that they can use to provide provide protection to the business needs. A business owner can incorporate an express statement of their employee's duty of fidelity and or fiduciary duties. Although these duties may be implied or imposed by statute already for the sake of certainty and to have maximum deterrent value, it's advisable to trans translate them into express contractual provisions. A business owner can also impose restrictions on the employee's outside interests and activities to limit the chance that the employee will divulge the business information either intentionally or inadvertently when conducting these side activities. 
the business owner can include an express term prohibiting either all or only certain defined activities, or they can create an upon approval mechanism. How the clause will be drafted depends on the resistance received from employees, especially if they are only working part time and are likely to disagree with a full ban on any other employment. A business owner can incorporate clauses into the contract, preserving confidentiality, both during and after the employment terminates. Although the implied protection on trade secret exists during and after termination, an express term will be beneficial for clarity and deterrent purpose. For confidential information, since the implied protection only exists during the employment, if a business owner wants to extend it to after the employment relationship has ceased, an express term is needed. For a post-termination restrictive covenant to have real and practical value, the business owner must invest time and effort to clearly define what the business considers to be confidential information and trade secrets and what employees can and cannot do with it. They should also impose contractual reporting and disclosure obligations on the employee to disclose misdeeds of both himself and any colleagues. Other clauses in an employment contract which will assist the business owner, especially for departing employees, who may or may not be heading to employment by a competitor is to incorporate a right to require the employee to go on garden leave during the notice period. Putting employee on garden leave means that the employee remains an employee and continues to be paid, but they will not need to work or they will work on altered duties. The employee will be excluded from the company's premises and business systems and the employer will be prohibited from contacting colleagues and customers. The employee is never, nevertheless still bound by the duties of fidelity and other employment obligations whilst they remain on garden leave. Often business owners can bulk against the idea of having to pay an employee to sit at home whilst they consider they get no value from it. However, they should not be too quick to discount the idea as effectively by putting an employee on guard and leave, the employer is able to restrict the employee from getting their hands on company information and also to keep them out of the market. Now, by the same token of being able to control employees whilst on garden leave, business owners should also include a right to suspend an employee while investigating their conduct if there are suspicions or allegations of wrongdoing against them. When an employee is on their way out of the company, it's also good to have a clause to require them to return co company property so that they can cut them off from the systems and also recover all devices. When drafting such clauses, business owners need to detail carefully what amounts to company property and whether they should be returned on request or immediately. In addition to a return of company property, business owners should couple a clause with an obligation to disclose any usernames or pass passwords which an employee may have created on devices and for pieces of work so that they avoid a scenario where the business owner is locked out of company laptops or cannot access work documents. Business owners should pay attention to employees' heavy use of their own IT resources and social media for business purposes. Two points that should be noted in this regard is when defining company property, a business owner should consider including the right to business information stored on employees' personal devices, and they may also want to include provisions to the effect that the employee undertakes that they will delete all business contacts in their social media before termination without retaining any copies. 
where suitable contractual provisions should be complemented by internal policies and procedures to provide detailed guidance to employees, such as codes of conduct, social media policies, and IT usage policies. Now, slide 13 sets out sanctions and enforcement options when confidential information and trade secrets are misused. So looking at things from an internal perspective, business owners can go for disciplinary action or suspension, provided that they have included contractual provisions and made internal policies for these. And even dismissal, which can be with or without garden leave, it is an option as a disciplinary action. Now with the court's assistance, business owners can try and obtain injunctive relief against an employee or any third party information receiver for disclosure and use of the trade secrets. Business owner can also seek damages against an employee or a third party information receiver for inducing an employee to breach his contract. It's third party information receiver could obviously be a new employer of the ex-employee. A business owner can also seek an order for specific performance against the employee or the information receiver, such as returning or destroying copies of documents containing trade secrets. Now, one practical step which a business owner can take to safeguard their business and confidential information is to motivate and reward employees sufficiently. The basic idea is that engaged and valued employees will be more loyal and so less likely to try and harm the business. I've listed for you on slide 14 some of the key practical ways. Which of these will be the most successful depends largely on the nature and diversity of the workforce, but the most important one is the last one. You must review the employment terms and conditions regularly. It's important because you need to check that the employee is properly benchmarked and incentivized in terms of pay and benefits for their position. This also provides an opportunity for a discussion on expectations and the employees know that they're not overlooked or taken for granted. Now, you also need to have suitable measures to detect and prevent misuse. One way is the already mentioned contractual reporting and disclosure obligations. Another way is to have con effective control on who has access to certain data. Each business differs, but what business owners should think about is what information they have that needs protection, who will have access to it, and how they will restrict or monitor access, for example, with swipe cards or with automated monitoring systems. If a business owner is monitoring employees, they need to pay attention to any applicable data privacy rights in the jurisdiction. Normally, you need to inform employees of the action which can be taken and the reasons for such action. Business owners need to make sure that they have a good justification for the monitoring, such as protection of legitimate business interests or suspicion of unlawful behavior. Business owners need to think about how they're going to regulate and monitor employee use of IT hardware and software. Some suggested safeguards would include putting controls on sending emails from work email accounts to personal email accounts restricting the use of social media for business, limiting the removal of physical documentation from the office, which is hard to trace compared to electronic files. And for that reason, although it may sound basic, think about where you place your photocopiers and make sure that codes are required for all print and copy jobs. Now, once you have detected misuse, prompt action is required to minimize any damage. It goes without saying that you'll need a team which usually includes lawyers to review the employment contract and identify the legal risks, a management team to take on a view on the commercial strategy and an internal or external IT personnel to assist on the forensics. 
Also, the business owner will be conducting disciplinary investigations and looking to establish what the employee has done or is intending to do, what information is at risk and what are the terms of employment and what is the likely value of the lost business. How you source that data will depend on the situation. For example, business owners may be able to just question the employee directly, or they can always image the employee's computer overnight to, to ascertain what actions they've been taken. Once information has been collated, the business owner should be able to ascertain if there's a real threat and then they need to take key decisions going forward as to whether they suspend or dismiss an employee or invoke any other contractual provisions such as guard and leave return of devices. They should also consider if they should institute legal proceedings. Often this comes down to a simple commercial balancing act. Will the potential damage to the business be dwarfed by the legal costs? It's always best to think forwards and design contingency plans in advance rather than be caught out and having to develop a response plan on the hoof. Business owners should have a plan as to how they deal with an employee who misuses their data, as other employees will think twice if they see the employer will take swift action to protect their business interests. Now turning to IP rights, the common thinking used to be that business owners should register their IP to ensure their rights were fully protected. This could mean applying for patent and design protection in the countries where they do business and they would be granted monopoly rights over a fixed duration of time. However, more and more business owners are shying away from this route and instead relying on trade secret protection, which so long as they can keep their trade secrets locked down, provides them with the ability to exploit their rights as long as that information can be kept secret rather than being given a monopoly for a fixed duration of time, which is the case where patents are concerned. Now the table on slide 17 sets out the pros and cons of registering a patent compared to relying on protection accorded for the asset being a trade secret. Now different businesses have different needs and so their preferences will vary as to whether they will decide to register their IP or rely on trade secret protection. Business owners may be more inclined to rely on trade secret protections if they're a startup with limited financial resources, since patent registration is very costly, if they market their products in jurisdictions with weaker patent protection, or if their business act asset will not actually pass the novelty test threshold associated with patents, for example, food recipes. Now, where patents may be the preferred choice of business owners, this is often the case if the business owners operate in heavily regulated industries, such as pharmaceuticals, where public disclosures of the inventions are mandatory, or if they frequently collaborate with or outsource to third parties. Also, if the business owner anticipates investments and acquisitions are likely in the future, then obviously they need to be able to show to their investors that their IP is fully protected. Now, of course, there are other types of protection open to business owners for the protection of the intellectual property, such as copyright, passing off, etc. And so a business owner will really need to fully consider how their assets and information can be protected before deciding which route to go in terms of the safeguarding of the business for the long term. This is the end of my presentation today. Thank you for listening. In case you'd like to contact me, my email address is listed on the last slide.